Hi guys, if you're in Central here, and welcome back to another video. And today we are going to be doing the Ninth Doctor's tier list as played by Christopher Eccleston. Now, <clears throat> Christopher Eccleston had quite a short era, having only one season, but his a lot of his stories are actually quite highly regarded by most people. So let's get into this. I believe it's only ten story run. Um. So yeah. Uh, first off, we have Rose, which is I, I really I've ranked I've reviewed this one. Really good introduction story. It's it, and it's just it's quite a good one. I also like the the Autons as a villain in this. Um, yeah, there's a lot you can see some points of it where it's pilot. It's a bit of a pilot, and things do change later on. Especially Mickey's car, and this is like a yellow car, and then I believe, and then later on it's changes. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a good. I also enjoy the fact that they've kind of done the same style as the Unearthly Child in the sense that when we look, we we meet the companions before we meet the Doctor. Like Rose has been in it for ages before we actually eventually meet the Doctor. But um, similar to Unearthly Child, where the Doctor doesn't appear in it for a little while, and Ian and Barbara have already and Susan have already been in it for a little while. Next, we have the. Uh, end of the world which is is pretty good that is pretty good um can i think in this story cassandra works as a villain but i don't think she ever really needed to come back it felt like this was like a good one-off thing especially how she dies and then for some reason they just bring her back in new earth but but which is a bit weird but in terms of the story i think she's a good villain an interesting villain um and quite manipulative i also just kind of like this point because this is as we haven't actually known much about the time war at this point this is the first kind of glimpse of the time war that we get so that's quite cool and then next we have i believe only the chris the Rickerson's only like full-on historical story i mean you could technically say father father's day was in a historical Actually, I suppose well, two aspect actually does he has a couple of historicals, but this is like his Christmas one. This is like his only Christmas one, and yeah, I I think it's quite good. Um, again, it's one of those ones which are quite, just quite a fun one. Uh, I th the only reason I put it below Enemy uh, End of the World is the fact that I'm not much as I'm not gonna go back to this one to watch it as much as um the other two so far on this list. However, Christopher Eccleston's really good in this one, and so is uh, Billy Piper and stuff. And also, this has the woman, I don't know her name, I think it's is it Eva Miles or something like that, who went on to play Gwen in Torchwood, and she's in this. And in, even when she appears in Doctor Who, they make a joke about her being in this as a role, uh, So, which is quite a, which is quite a funny and, uh, thing. Now, because you have the Slovene two-parter. Now, I think the Slovene two-parter is actually all right. A lot of people complain about this one as the Slovene fart a lot and stuff like that. But honestly, I think it's quite good. And for the first two-parter, I think the cliffhanger is really strong. Um, and yeah, I like really just like watch this one. And although it's two parts, I don't really feel like the two-parter format for this one really feels like two parts. Because there's some stories in with which are two parts which don't have anything going on. In one in half in a bit of it, and you feel like there's a lot of padding in it. But in this, it flows quite nice, and it makes sense doing all of the to go to all these things. I definitely will say though that the end of the first part, start of the second part, where they're actually in Downing Street, is a little bit more interesting than the beginning of part one. However, I think the beginning of part one does quite a lot, does build on the, does do more world building based on our uh, rows. <clears throat> but next we've got Dalek, which is obviously a lot of people's uh, favorite, some a lot of people's favorite Dalek story. And yeah, it's definitely an S tier. I think it's just uh, just a good story. I mean, if someone was watch going to watch a Dalek Doctor Who story and they wanted to watch a Dalek story, I definitely and I definitely recommend something from the new series being this one or Parting of the Ways, which I'll get onto in a bit, just because. They they are such a good Dalek story. They show the brute force of the Daleks. Um, and considering it's just one Dalek, it just shows the brute force. I mean, 
yes, it's an S tier at the moment, but it's not my favourite Christopher Eccleston story, mainly because I find that the whole ending of the Dalek having feelings, just I never really understood why that was, why that happened, because even then later on, uh, Stephen Moffat, which I know is not the same writer, but he wrote about how the Daleks use it to use the time energy, and even Russell T. Davis did it in the Genesis arc with the Genesis arc, where they use the Time Lord energy and extra- extrapolate it for their own means. But I don't understand that because that. But then doesn't that mean that all the Daleks that fought in the war and used the time regeneration energy to and extrapolated it? Doesn't that mean they'll all have feelings? Which never made sense in my head. But yeah. Um, but it's also the introduction of Adam, who Adam was a really short-lived companion who was literally in this and long game. And in this, it feels like he works. But honestly, I, I, I don't, I'm not, I lot, like a lot of people, I don't really seem the point in him. Uh, yeah, he's, he's quite forgettable as a companion. But obviously after that, we've got the long game. It's, it's, it's all right. It's not the best thing ever. I think a thing with the long game is, is that it would definitely be one for me that I would never rewatch after watching it for the first time or, you know, after watching it once or twice. But Simon Pegg in it is really funny and I watch it because it's quite cool to watch him. And the Doctor seems to be quite angry in this for some reason. But again, it also quite it also ties into Bad, the Bad Wolf Parting of the Ways quite nicely, so you do need to really watch this one to understand what the Doctor's talking about and sometimes, and what's gone on in Parting of the Ways uh, beforehand, so yeah, but it's still quite a good story. Now, for me, the weakest of uh, his run, which is Father's Day, now, for, no, by no means is Father's Day a bad story. If it was a bad story, it'd be near D, maybe even F tier kind of story, but I think it's quite good. I uh, I enjoy the concept of it. I enjoy the, the just the uh, whole idea of these reapers coming out of time and trying to fix a paradox. However, I think the issue c- comes where in the future of Doctor Who and even in the even before like uh, classic in the classic run, the it kind of does create its own paradox in itself. Like, there's a lot of times when you could go, well, why didn't the Reapers appear here? Why didn't the Reapers appear here? So it was a good concept and a good execution, I think. But for one, I don't think the story is that engaging, especially when the Doctor disappears for like a bit, for like the last couple of, the last little bit. I also think that the, just a whole uh, idea of these things come in, just ne- because they never get brought up again, just feels like there was a bit of a waste of, time uh i mean yeah it just it's just not yeah it's just not a great idea um then we got um, uh, the empty child doctor dances great script by stephen moffat before he was showrunner definitely a high a tier i'm not putting it in s tier a lot of people love this story and i do agree to a point i think it's really good and interesting concept but uh I do think it can get held back by just, I mean, just a bit of a lazy writing some at some points. I mean, I can see some of Captain Jackson's dialogue's a bit dated, and that does detract from it because you're thinking, well, maybe that wasn't the best thing he could have said. I mean, I'm pretty sure his opening line is some, is saying something about uh, Rose Tyler's book, which is a bit weird. Um, so, And also, I think the creepiness is still there for me, but I was... A lot when I actually ended up finding this story and watching it for the first time, I was definitely significantly older than some people would have been when they first watched it. So the creepiness wasn't there, and I think there's been definitely more scary villains later on in the in Doctor Who. Next we have Boomtown, and now I really like Boomtown. Boomtown was my underrated story of season of i mean not season one but uh yeah season one because chris reckerson's like chris reckerson's doctor it's just a good story i think the best part about it is just it's quite a comic episode i mean considering pr- before this you've got to have like a sp- quite a spooky scary episode after it you've got a regeneration story and a significant amount of kills 
I think arguably one of the most uh, biggest kills for any Doctor Who story. I think it might, if people actually counted it, would probably be more than uh, Resurrection of the Daleks. But then in between, you've got this weird, fun little story, which a lot of people do forget about. And also, it's just quite unusual because this was, in a sense, tying into Torchwood. I mean, a lot of this, I mean, the fact the whole rift and that stairway that comes up in Torchwood, that's like whole links. But um, it's just it's just one that slips through the cracks. And I also am a fan of funny stories, that's like funny comedic stories. And so this is one of those main ones. I mean, and also this if you didn't like the Slovene in the first one, the Slovene in this one, uh, Margaret or whatever she's called, she's severely more human in this. I think she comes out of her Slovene outfit, I think, uh, at once at the beginning of the story, and then her, you see her arm uh, at the end of it. But those are the literally the only two times you actually see her. But then in, in number one, We've got the num- number one and the last story, my favourite story, Bad Wolf Parting of the Ways. Now, I think there's a lot of debate over people, which is quite interesting. A lot of people debate whether Dalek and Parting of the Ways, or Bad Wolf Parting of the Ways, is the better Dalek story. Because I think, out of all of the new series stuff so far, I think those are definitely my top in my top two Dalek stories. I think they are competing both for first. Uh, I just think... The main, the main drawback for Parting of the Ways and Bad Wolf is that in Bad Wolf, the Daleks aren't in it until the very, very end in the cliffhanger. Also, the Doctor's messing around in different game shows and Jack and Rose are in different game shows and stuff. And yes, that is a fair point. But I actually think Bad Wolf is quite underrated as an episode. I think if people are going to watch Bad Wolf, it will be to watch Parting of the Ways. And I think that's unfair on Bad Wolf because I actually really enjoy it. I think the whole Big Brother bit is quite funny. Everything that Jack does in the in the Getting Chains thing is just hilarious, carrying over from Bad Wolf and the comedy in Bad Wolf. And then I don't, I don't, I'm not as, I must admit, I'm not as fan with Rose's thing on the weakest link. But I do like the payoff of her family, like getting supposedly disintegrated. Uh, but yeah. But, but then I think Parting of the Ways is just a phenomenal episode. And if you haven't watched Parting of the Ways, you should really watch it. But if you've heard any positive, if you've heard positive stuff about Parting of the Ways, that's good. But then don't go into Bad Wolf expecting it just to be a bit of filler. Because you, if you go in it with an open mind, you will probably be pleasantly surprised. But yeah, if you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And... Yeah, to say, to say what your favourite Chris Reckerson story is in the comments uh, and watch another video. But yeah, um, see ya.